Welcome to Ucanic. Today here on Ucanic, we have a 2015 Chrysler 300. On this Chrysler 300, we have the 3.6 liter um, V6 motor. It's a Pentastar engine uh, that the Chrysler uh, Dodge uh, puts in their vehicles. And um, we have a check engine light on, and we're going to go ahead and read the code. We also have, um, with this check engine light, we have some rough starting, but the vehicle does start and run. So with our OBD2 scanner hooked up, this is a Bluetooth option, um, this is UCAN-2. Um, and so we have our scanner hooked up. We have the car in the run position um, with the engine uh, started to be able to read the codes. That means we tap the button twice without putting our foot on the brake pedal. And then that way it puts it into the run position. So we're gonna go through diagnostic. We're gonna choose the Chrysler. We're going to do the smart VIN. We communicate, it's gonna come back. It's gonna populate what is this vehicle and engine size a lot of times there we go um, match our VIN good to go enter and then quick scan will scan every module in the vehicle uh, control module That's what we're gonna do and then we're gonna go down here to the powertrain control module because that's the engine control module and then we are going to go ahead and hit the read codes and we come back with a P0335, and that's the crankshaft position sensor circuit. So we're having an issue with the crankshaft position sensor, and I'm going to go ahead and hit the button and start the car so you can see what it would sound like. A lot of times when you've got a crankshaft position sensor, when it goes completely bad or it's for whatever reason, like your car could just completely stop and never start, and sometimes it doesn't ever even actually trigger the code. But this one does. So I'm going to go um, start the vehicle and you're going to hear a crank a bit before it starts. Up. So as you hear, it did start up, which is uh, in one degree kind of um, it's interesting because, like I said, a lot of times when there's anything wrong with the camshaft or the crankshaft position sensor, the vehicle won't run. Because the crankshaft, camshaft, and all those sensors, they work with each other. They communicate with the um, power control module or powertrain control module on this vehicle. They communicate with that, and they can tell the engine it's, it's good to start. If they're all out of, um, out of sync, a lot of times the engine won't start because uh, the timing is not correct. So to locate this uh, sensor... Um, you are going to want to raise the vehicle to get easier access to be able to remove it from the bottom. Um, if you have the splash shield on the bottom on the middle, you'll remove that to get access. Raise your vehicle, support it on jack stands. You need a 10 millimeter um, wrench and or socket and a screwdriver uh, to help get the electrical connection undone. And then um, you'll be able to uh, replace this sensor. It's not too hard. All right, so vehicle raised up and in position for it to be able to crawl under to get that sensor. So if we're looking at the, uh, the right side of the vehicle being your passenger side, uh, left side if you're looking at it from the front, um, our sensor, I can see it, I don't know if I can get the camera on it. It's right down below those grounding wires there, somewhere in there. So right down there. We're kind of seeing the electric where it goes into that sensor. So that's the sensor right there. Um, a lot harder to access from up top, so we're going to go, of course, down below. But just so you know, it's on the left side, back side of the engine, um, if, as you're looking at it from the front. So um, vehicle raise, supported. Now we're going to go down and be able to get there. All right, so down here from below, splash shield been removed. We've got a transmission here, we've got the engine here, we have this sensor right here. That's the one we're going for. We need to unhook that electric connector. We've got the, uh, the safety lock in there. So that little red tab, we want to press it back a little bit. Whether you do it from this side or you kind of pull it back from the back side, either way. And then once that's um, pressed and released, now we can squeeze the connector together and be able to unhook it. 
Now we take our 10 millimeter, whether you're using a wrench or a, uh, uh, a ratchet, and go in the counterclockwise, and then be able to remove the, uh, the bolt here that holds this sensor in. All right, we removed the bolt that's holding the sensor in, and now be able to um, pull it out. You may have to rock it a little bit, slide it side to side, and be able to get the sensor to come out. And so that's the uh, removal of our sensor. And then you can see there where it came out of. And so you also want to make sure that the, uh, the O-ring came out with the one that came out, so that when you put your new one in, you don't have uh, two O-rings in there. So to replace that sensor, we go in the reverse and we put the new one back in, tighten the bolt, and hook up the electrical connector. So give me one second. All right, so um, I put a little bit of oil on the sensor, be able to get it in, and then being able to locate the hole there, press it in, it should go in fairly easy. We don't want to smash that O-ring and uh, damage it. And then get the uh, number 10 bolt. Again, may need to move it a little bit uh, to get it into the orientation where the bolt will start and go in. And so now we install the bolt. And we can uh, put that electric connector on, make sure we put the safety lock down. And now we want to uh, finish tightening up that bolt. This bolt, it just goes in snug because we're really just holding that plastic sensor in so it doesn't fall out. There we go. Now that's the install of the sensor. Now we need to go back through and clear out the code. And like I said, it came in from the, uh, what would be the right side of the vehicle, right behind the passenger tire. And then it's right up there above the sway bar and that uh, subframe. So it's fairly easy. So now let's go back up and we will clear the code. And, um, and that's the, the remainder of what we have to do here. All right, so back up here with the uh, scanner. Um, we're gonna double check that the ignition on and in the run position when you're ready to clear the codes and then be able to clear out the codes. So to be able to clear the codes, we're gonna back up a little bit. It's good to back up at least to the selection where you um, pick the powertrain. So we're gonna pick the powertrain control module. And then um, we can read the code again just for fun. It's in there. Now we'll clear the code, make sure that our ignition was on, engine not running. Then we'll clear the codes out. And there we go, codes are cleared. And that basically is doing another check again, but we'll double check it. So everything's good. So um, being that we replaced that and it did happen to start before, now I'm going to just go ahead and start the vehicle just so you see how it starts. And it's going to start a lot better with that sensor replaced. Sometimes when those sensors go bad, generally your car won't start. But if you get that hesitation and then you have that code, you're going to want to replace that a lot sooner. And so you don't end up stranded. You see there, that started uh, like right on cue. It didn't crank uh, a good handful of revolutions and then start up, started right on cue um, due to the sensor was able to communicate with the uh, PCM and the other sensors and, and start right up with no problem. Thanks for watching Mechanic, where you can be the mechanic.